Hi folks, how's everybody doing? I think you're muted, Ryan. How you doing? Good. How you doing, Ryan? Hey, Mel, I'm good. How about you? Good. Yep. All right. If you were trying to talk, you were muted. Oh, I uh, am I good now? No, you, you, you're not yeah. muted. Somebody you're turned now. the volume up. What? You're, you're, you're good now. <laughs> I'm good now. Okay, cool. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, I was just saying I'm doing good. Yeah, I'm um, looking forward to teaching you guys. Um, I will have to, I have to say I've taught in a few uh, of the previous cohorts, but I haven't taught in this cohort yet. So it's probably going to be a little bit of floundering because there's some changes that have happened between them. So I'm just going to apologize in advance for any of that. <laughs> Hopefully Mel will set me straight though. No worries. Okay. Do you guys normally kick off right at 5.30 or do you sort of wait a little bit for people to roll in or how does it usually go? Um, Max would normally give a, a few minutes to see if anybody um, like me or whatever. Just a few minutes. Okay, cool. So in general, uh, how would you all say the, cl the, the class has been going so far? You've been enjoying it? Been fun? A little bit of all the above. <laughs> yeah, challenging is a good word. Yeah, I was up last night till about mm, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning trying to figure out how to make my buttons turn colors when <laughs> they take a turn in my tic-tac-toe and... I wasn't able to implement it in my program, but I was able to do it like in a test program. So I don't know what was okay. the disconnect. Yeah, I mean, Max has probably said it, but like a big thing with this sort of program is just putting in the time. Like there's sort of a certain amount of time you have to put into it, just like doing the thing over and over and eventually you'll figure it out. That, that was a question I did, that I didn't get to ask him because I forgot, but, but um. What would you recommend as an instructor that, you know, feasibly to, you know, do decent for each hour in class we should do? I know like at college, they say for hard classes, you know, two to three hours for each hour in class. I th so I'm going to phrase it in a different way, which may or may not be helpful. Let me know. Um, but in general, there's sort of an adage that it's often said with skills you're trying to learn. And the, the thing that's said is you have to put 10,000 hours into learning a skill. And once you sort of put that amount of time into learning a skill, you sort of become a, like a, a, a I, I would say like an expert at that skill. So I don't know if I can give you like a necessarily like you need to put this, in, this amount of hours in per class hour or something. Um, what I would say though is I would, it would behoove you to put in as much time as you feel you can, because every hour you're sitting in front of a computer working on this stuff, you're learning, you're getting better, and it's just going to infinitely multiply and help going forward. Um, and for me, like a big way I sort of have gotten to the place I am with software is there was a period in my life where I, no joke, probably put in like eight to 10 hours a day in front of a computer for at least four or five years straight. Um, and it's just, when you put in that kind of time, you just figure things out. <laughs> yeah. so hopefully that's helpful. Yeah, um, I think I heard, uh, uh, who was it, Max, uh, Malcolm Gladwell that spoke about that, the 10,000 hours. Mm -hmm. A few other people too, Robert Green, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm going to ask Mel because I think you might have a better handle on this. Are we missing anybody? I think we got a good group, so I think we can get started. Okay, cool. Um, so hi, everybody. I'm not Max. I'm Ryan. 
nice to meet you. <laughs> um, I've uh, I've taught in a couple other careers and code cohorts, but this is my first time teaching you guys, of course. Um, I'm going to be talking about networking for the next week. Um, but before I get into that, I want to give you a little bit of an introduction into myself, just so you kind of know where I'm coming from. Um, so I've been a software developer professionally for a little over 10 years now. Um, I worked at a few different companies based in Syracuse, um, or sort of with a presence in Syracuse. First, a company called Lono, which is actually founded by one of the other Hack Upstate folks, uh, Doug Crescenzi. Um, and then now at Density, which is a, a company that makes uh, devices that go above doorways and anonymously count people. Um, so sort of in my day to day, I do sort of things all over the map, but it's mostly a lot of JavaScript and Python. Um, but as part of it, I do a lot of stuff with networking and that's what I'm gonna be teaching you guys this time around. Um, so I'm in general, for me, Slack's pretty open. If you wanna reach out, I'm more than willing to chat. And I bet Mel can probably uh, speak to that. I'm kind of willing to just chat about whatever and I'm pretty open. Um, but I'll let you judge that yourself too. So um, guess at this point, I will, uh, so I'm, Max didn't give me the official etiquette, but it's, I'm looking, looking through things. It looks like the CIC live stream C3 channel is where things have sort of been posted for each class. I'm seeing some shaking heads, so I'm going to go with that. So I'm yeah. going to post, uh, the presentation for this week in there. Um, this is just a big slide deck we're going to go through. Um, it's going to be for all the days, so you're welcome to sort of just keep that link. Um, I can also post it every day if, if it'd be helpful. And I'll post it in the chat. Wonderful. Um, okay. Let me share my screen here. Uh, oh, also, uh, so Mel, I, Max said there was nothing special I needed to do to kick off the, like he said the recording would start and everything. You haven't heard anything different, right? No, I haven't heard anything different. When I came in, it was recording, so we should be good. Cool, sweet. Yeah, and I think just, it's recording it, right here too. It is, just remember to stop it at break and then restart it when we start back up. Oh, actually Max did say I'd turn on the auto transcription, I think. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, share my screen here. Okay. Can everybody see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Sweet. So we're going to be talking about networking and APIs. Um, I'm going to give you a heads up. In the past when I've taught this module, it's been either a three-week or a two-week module. So I've had to try to condense it down into one week and I've, I've cut out some things, but for that reason, it's gonna be kind of dense. I'm gonna try my best to sort of break it up as best as possible, but I just wanna go into it with that expectation that it's going to be a little bit dense. And if you're having trouble keeping up, let me know and I'll try my best to slow down where I can. Excuse um, me, uh, right? somebody's microphone is like making a lot of noise. I don't know who that is. So if we call it mute our mics. Hmm, let's see. It seems to have stopped. Okay, maybe we're good. So before I get into networking on APIs, um, sort of day one of it, I want to, uh, there's an end project we're going to be doing for this class I want to show you. Just sort of to give you a rough idea of sort of the direction we're going to be moving throughout this week. Um, this, this final project here is actually going to be your homework assignment at the very end of the week. So what this is, if I can open it up over here, this is a website that when I visit, it talks to an external service. It talks to the New York Times. And it gets a list of all the New York Times best-selling books, and it renders them here on the screen. So this is just a website, just like you've built in the past in, in Careers in Code. The thing that's special is that it interacts with another external service with some networking logic. Um, but I just wanted to show this to you to give you sort of an idea of where we're going to be headed at the end. And if you're, you're uh, welcome to look at it on your own here too. I'll post it in the channel. Okay. So day one, um, we're going to be talking about today uh, three things, protocols, HTTP. Uh, 
is there a cracking sound i'm not sure if it's your your keyboard <laughs> i'm not there's, sure yeah there's i'm getting what? the same thing there's yeah, a cracking it, sound when you speak i'm getting the same hmm. thing so it might be your microphone uh let's see is this any better so you got to speak because it's only happening while you're speaking is, is yeah. this any better like this yeah, that's perfect yep okay yeah. interesting Okay, I guess I'm holding my mic. <laughs> um, so uh, day one, we're going to be talking about protocols, HTTP, and an application called Postman. So if uh, hopefully most of you saw, I posted a message in Slack and also through Canvas to send out a notification. And I was hoping most of you could download Postman ahead of time. If you hadn't, haven't, I'll, uh, I'll stop in the middle and we can do it then. But uh, that's an application we're going to be using a bit later today. So we're going to start out with what is a protocol. And a protocol is it's a standard used to define a method of exchanging data. And that's a lot of fancy words. So let's let's sort of save an example of what a protocol is. Um, so an example protocol, maybe in day to day life, might be going out to eat at like a sit sit down restaurant. So what you do is everyone probably knows you go into a restaurant and you approach sort of a member of like the wait staff and, they, and then they bring you to a table. And then uh, you tell the member of the wait staff what you want to order. So you sort of say, I'd like to order this. Some time goes by and then the food is brought out from the kitchen and you eat it. And this is sort of like a, a thing that's most people are probably familiar with sort of a step-by-step -step process. But some important things about this protocol, um, it's sort of commonly known by anyone who goes into the restaurant. So you enter a restaurant and you know immediately what you're doing. You don't have to like ask someone at the restaurant, okay, like how, what do I do here? Do I, how, how does this work? It's just sort of a thing everyone knows sort of to do. And most restaurants follow the sort of same approach. It's not like some restaurants do it one way, some restaurants do it the other way. I mean, there's a little bit of variation, but for the most part, like this is just sort of how it works. And anyone who's sort of lived life kind of is familiar with it. So that's like a human-based protocol. Um, you have different, and actually the other thing I want to mention, you've got different sort of, uh, well, I'll use the term actors in this sort of protocol. You have someone who's at the restaurant ordering food. You have sort of the wait staff person. You have the people in the kitchen. A bunch of different people who are sort of interacting with a bunch of these sort of known interactions. And there's sort of a step-by-step -step process. And that's sort of a human-based protocol. But let's talk about something that's more concrete, more tech-based, because that's really what we're talking about in this module. And an example of a protocol that is more tech-based, one that we're going to be talking about a lot this week, is what's called a uh, or Oh, actually, I had some more in here. I, I didn't quite realize I did. Um, so computer protocols have the same sort of sort of properties of a, uh, of a human-based protocol. Um, a computer protocol, you have a bunch of sort of steps that are known in advance. And you have a bunch of different sort of actors or programs that know how to speak that protocol. So just like the sort of restaurant example, you go into a restaurant, you know what to do. With a computer program, the computer program knows how to speak the protocol. It just sort of knows how it works. There's sort of an implicit assumption that it just knows the steps. It's sort of codified into the, the, the language or into the program itself. So I realize this is a little bit abstract, but I have to get through a little bit of this for some of the more concrete stuff so we can talk about a bit more of the concrete stuff. Um, so let's talk about an example of a real computer protocol. And the one we're going to be talking about today, and we're going to be talking about a lot this week, is a protocol called HTTP. And you've, I would imagine you've probably heard of this before. Like maybe you've gone to a web browser and you've had to enter uh, something in the, in the URL bar and you've typed HTTP colon slash slash something 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 dot com. Mm -hmm. um, that's, H that's, that's sort of related to this protocol. Um, HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. That's not all that important, but really what it is, it's the protocol that web browsers use to ask web servers for information. It's the language web browsers speak. 
And what's so special about it is it's the only language web browsers know how to speak. So if you want to write a, uh, you want to do something with an external service in a web browser, you want to talk to some third party thing. The only way you can do that is with HTTP. So it's a really important sort of tool to understand in the web browser. Or really, and, and it's an important language, important protocol. Okay, let's talk a little bit about sort of the steps required for HTTP. So the, the primary sort of concept in HTTP um, is kind of similar to the way that sort of restaurant example worked, where you sort of have someone who goes into a restaurant, asks for a, uh, to be sat, sat down, orders food, and then after that gets their food and eats it. Um, HTTP has two sort of people, two sort of actors, two sort of systems involved, what's called the client and what's called the server. The client in HTTP is the thing that is sort of initiating the, the interaction, the sort of thing starting the, what we call the request. And the server is the thing that's, that's processing that request uh, computing some results and sending it back to the client. So let's walk through that step by step. So the client starts off by connecting to the server over the internet. And I, uh, I, I'm sort of leaving this kind of opaque about connecting to the server over the internet. I'd love to get into a bit more of the underlying networking details, but unfortunately we don't really have time this week to do it. Uh, but if you're curious, send me a message in Slack and I can send you some stuff to read. Um, but anyway, the client connects to the server over the internet. So once the client is connected to the server, it sends the server a bunch of information. And this is the request. This is sort of the, the, the information that, that uh, sort of uh, summarizes like the question the client is asking the server. The server then receives this information from the client and, and sort of processes it, parses it, figures out what the question is, figures out the answer to that question. Um, and in this sort of process, this is where like the bulk of sort of the server's logic occurs. And you can do really anything you want with the data coming in from that request. And you'll talk about this later on in the module or later on in careers in code. Um, we're not gonna be talking about how to write your own servers right now, but that's gonna be later on in the class. Um, but you can do things like for example, maybe store some of that information into a database or do some computation or some math, or maybe even make another HTTP request with that information. Um, this is really where things start to get a sort of creative as, a, as like a backend developer. But anyway, at the very end, eventually that server has to come up with some results that finish up that computation. And once it does, um, Sorry, I had a little thing pop up here. Um, once it does, then uh, that information is sent back to the client. Um, and this information that's sent back to the client, this is called the response. So what the initial thing from the client to the server is called the request. The thing from the server to the client later on is called the response. These sort of phrases and words are really important. So I just want to emphasize them. Once the, the client receives the response back from the server, it sort of parses it, uh, unpacks it, figures out all the information inside. And then at that point, the HTTP request is complete, sort of protocol is done. So this sort of workflow here is what we're gonna be digging into uh, significantly today, sort of unpacking all the different parts of it, talking about all the pieces involved. And hopefully by the end of the day, we'll have you making some requests on your own using Postman. Okay. Um, so I'm taking a little look quickly through chat here. Um, I see, uh, Danielle, you're having some trouble downloading Postman. Your system does not have enough space. Um, um <clears throat> I had a problem. Uh, I, I, is she trying to do it with Chrome? Because I had a problem with Chrome. I had to use Safari. Oh. Hmm. I, yeah, yes, I was on Chrome, but I, I think it's more so saying that I don't have um, space on my laptop. Okay. Um, maybe we can uh, talk about this a little bit during the break, but if I had to guess, you maybe just, have you put a lot of stuff on your hard disk? Maybe you just don't have a lot of space on there and you have to clear some stuff off? 
Okay. Just a total I'll gas. Off. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the problem. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Um, if you're still having trouble, though, let me know or let uh, Mel know. We can try to work through it with you. Um, yes, and select the, uh, the, the Mac Apple chip when downloading. Good point. Um, okay, before I get too much further here, I've done a lot of talking. I want to open the floor and, and ask anyone if they have any questions. This is sort of what I'm talking about here with the HTTP stuff makes sense at a high level. Sort of the protocol, the rough steps, what sort of is going on between the client and the server, like client, server, request, response. I, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, I would just have to read it a little bit more. I feel like you said it, so <laughs> like I understood it, but cool. just to sure I understood it, I would probably like watch a few more videos on it. Cool. I mean, we're going to rehash it a bunch over the next couple hours. So if you're, you're, you're following along now, I think that's probably good. Okay. Yeah, as a high level explanation, it, it, it makes sense. Cool. Um, also, little uh, nitpick or question here. Um, how does Max normally do this sort of thing? Is there some sort of thing where it'll be like, does everyone like do a thumbs up if they understand it or does he do like a poll or? He does a poll. Yeah. Okay. I might have to ask him how I make a poll because I'm not actually sure. <laughs> I'm not a, a Zoom expert like uh, Max is, unfortunately. Um, but just do, you know, like a one in Zoom and do like a thumbs up for everyone that understands and, you know. Yeah, okay. Um, the, th the thing is, well, I'm going to talk to Max because it's a little, uh, setting up a poll is not as simple as like the, the built-in polls aren't as simple as they should be, I don't think, but Would you I don't know. To do a reaction, so you. Yeah, that, that might work better. Okay, I'll keep it in mind going forward. Thanks, folks. Um, okay, so now we're going to talk about what's actually inside those requests and responses. This sort of been like these opaque, sort of pieces of information, but the, there's some important fields inside them that we're going to talk about. Okay. So just really high level before we, we're going to break this down and I realize it's a little bit dense here, but you can think of a request and a response being a piece of, uh, just sort of a, a large sort of text string with a bunch of pieces of information within it. Um, and this piece of information are sort of encoded in the special format that looks sort of like this here. So when I'm going to, I'm going to be talking about here requests and responses, and I'm going to be showing sort of this example here with sort of these different pieces like post and HTTP 1.1. And the reason why I'm showing it like this is because this is the literal text that gets sent from the client to the server. Um, and the same thing with this example response here. This is the literal text that gets sent back the other way. So that, that's why I'm sort of showing it this way. It's not like an arbitrary thing. It's because this is actually literal text that gets sent. And, um, but let's, let's break these down. So parts of an HTTP request. There's five things. The method, the URL, um, well, technically the path. And we'll talk about what, that in a second the version, headers, and body, and the body's optional. Okay, let's, uh, let's break that down here. So, method. So the HTTP method sort of, sort of describes the action that's going on with that request. And we're gonna get into this a little bit later on in the week. For now, the two methods that are important to know about are get and post, all uppercase, G-E-T, all uppercase P-O-S-T. Usually a get means something like give me information or I would like to read information. Usually a post means something like I would like to update information or I'd like to change information. Um, you can sort of think of it kind of like the verb. If you were to think of the HTTP request as sort of like a sentence, it's like what you're doing. Okay, 
There's a lot of methods. Um, the ones that you'll run into the most, and we're going to get into this much later in the week, uh, get, post, put, patch, and delete are pretty common. And there's more than that too. Um, but uh, we're going to get into that later in the week. I just wanted to give you a lift somewhere for completeness. Um, one last thing. And that's, uh, by default, web browsers make a get request. So if you don't specify a method when you make a request, it's usually a get request. Now, something else I want to bring up, kind of before we get further into this, which I was hoping I would have brought up before. But remember I was saying the only language that a web browser speaks is HTTP? So when I say that, I really do mean that. And so much so that like when you, let's say I open a new tab here and I do something like go to HTTP colon slash slash example.com, okay? And I hit enter and I get this nice little example domain thing. What just happened there is the web browser made an HTTP request to ex this example.com thing. It sort of did that request response thing. It made a request. The server did some processing, it returned back a response. And that response contained a bunch of HTML to render this page. We're gonna talk about this a little bit later, later today. But the point I wanna make while we're on methods here is that the web browser by default, when you make a request uh, in like a, a, a sort of a tab or sort of in any sort of context where like you're fetching data, that's a get request. So the request that I made here when I was in this tab, the sort of request that was kicked off, um, that's a get request. Um, I'm going to get into this a little bit more shortly, but I just want to bring that up while, while we're on this topic. Um, okay, path. So you can think of a path sort of like the proper noun. So if you think of get or like po uh, post as like the verb or the action, the path is sort of what the request is going to be reading or affecting. So what that means is like maybe uh, in, in the case of, uh, uh, let's say you've got a web server where you're sort of uh, wanna give back like a, a login page or something like that. You might put that at the path slash login. Um, and that's sort of what the, what the client, the web browser would do is it would make a request, it would make a get request to slash login. And that's sort of what the request contains. And the response might contain like the login page contents, sort of the HTML for that page. So it, it, the, the point I'm trying to make is like, that is sort of the, the, the thing you're trying to request. Um, in addition, the default path is slash. So if you make a request, and you don't include a path or sort of you don't want to include one or there's, you just want it to be like the default value, that's slash. Um, in this request I made right here, it's slash, because there's sort of no path after this here, but we're going to get to that in a second. Um, okay. HTTP version. So the HTTP version, for all we're going to be doing this week is, and I think I would say in all of careers and code, but I should have asked that mask, max this beforehand, is all going to be HTTP 1.1. Um, HTTP 1.1 is the most common version of HTTP in use currently. HTTP 2 is starting to become a thing, but I'm, we're not going to use it this week. I'm pretty sure it's not going to come up for the rest of the class. Um, and if it does, it's going to be abstracted away where it probably won't be a big deal. So we're going to be talking about HTTP 1.1. And for that reason, all the requests are going to make or that I'm going to show, or we're going to have a version here of HTTP 1.1. Um, you might ask what's different in the different versions. Um, HTTP 1.0 and 1.1 are very similar. There's only a couple small changes. HTTP 2 is significantly different. Um, but again, probably isn't going to be a big deal for, uh, for you this week. Question, okay. right? Yes. That doesn't have anything to do with Web 3.0 and all that stuff, does it? It does not. Nope. This is completely unrelated. Um, Thank you. I have a question. Well, what's yeah. the difference between the two versions? Like so I have a question. So what is used in like to like, is there a different code or a different like type of thing that they use in those ones? Yeah, so let me give you just a, like a high level uh, answer there. But I'm, I'm, 
I'm not going to get too deep into it because it could turn into a whole thing. <laughs> um, but if you're curious, I'll send you some reading afterwards. You can look into it. But at a high level, um, you're going to notice that HTTP 1.1 is very verbose. There's a lot of sort of text to your writing. And that's good in that it's easy to understand. It's sort of a text-based protocol. But because it's text-based, um, it's sort of larger, like each request and response are just sort of larger in size than they necessarily have to be. So HTTP2, one of the big things that it does is it actually compresses all of the data in the request at a binary level to make it much smaller. So it's nice because it's much smaller and more efficient, but it's not as nice because it's harder to debug without specialized tools. And the only place you're really going to see it right now is if you're interfacing with a server that's like really brand new or sort of like using leading edge technology. Um, I don't believe Max is going to be doing that. And I'm definitely not doing that for this module. So I figured it's probably easier to talk about the, the easier to uh, easier to de debug and reason about stuff with HTTP 1.1. Is that helpful? Yes. yes. Cool. I like when I hear yes in unison. Okay, HTTP headers. So this is one of the primary, so you've probably noticed so far, we've talked about sort of an action, like a noun. We haven't really talked about like sort of parameters or like, like ways you can sort of pass information about like what exactly you want the request to do. Um, and this is one of the ways where headers can come in. So HTTP headers are a set of sort of key value pairs. So you've, you're probably familiar with JavaScript objects. How you sort of that's sort of a data structure that holds a key and then a mapping to a value. You can think of it very similar to that, where you've got a bunch of keys that are all strings and a bunch of values that are all strings. You can have as many uh, headers as you'd like in a in a network or in, in a request. Um, there are some standard headers that tend to be included in requests, and we're going to talk about those later in the week. Um, Usually they're formatted in a special format called train case. That's one way you'll hear it called. And it look, uh, it's every word basically is capitalized and you put a dash in between all the words. So you'll see over here, like user agent is user dash agent like this or upgrade and secure uh, or accept encoding. Um, they call it train case because it kind of looks like a bunch of train cars connected together with little hitches with the dashes, but whatever. Um, the software engineer is being funny. Um, but uh, typically that's the way that headers are formatted. Um, we're not going to get into quite today all the sort of uses of headers. But right now I would say thinking of them as a way by which you can sort of include metadata in a request or sort of attaching information to a request is, is probably the most helpful place to start. Um, Okay. Finally, request body. So I know I just said headers are a way you can include metadata in a request. And the body is kind of the same sort of thing. But the body isn't really like a bunch of key value representation, like a bunch of keys and values. The body is just a chunk of text or a chunk of binary information that you can include along with a request. Now, an important thing about the body is that you can only include bodies in non-get requests. And this is sort of like a, just a weird part of how HTTP works. But in general, if you're making a get request, you tend to include your metadata in something like headers or a thing called query string parameters, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. Um, if you're making a post request or a put request, but for today, just a post request, you tend to include your sort of body or your information about what the request should update in the body. So, I talked about how a, a, a get is sort of like read data or tell me what data is at this location. And a post is like update data or like create data. Well, typically if you make a post request, the body is where the thing you want to update, the information about like what you want the request to do goes. Um, how exactly that information is represented can sort of vary dependent on the service you're talking to. And we're gonna talk about that a lot, that a lot later this week or we're going to be talking about that topic a lot more later this week. There we go. Okay. So 
So putting that all back together again here, here's an example post request for the body. So I'm making a post request here to slash users. So sort of performing an update or a creation or sort of pushing data to the server on slash users. I'm using HTTP 1.1. I've got some headers associated with it. And I've got this body here, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So at a high level, I'd imagine probably after the explanation I just gave you, you can look at this and sort of pick apart all the different parts of the of that request and sort of tell me what the each thing is. Um, give me a thumbs up if you if you think you got that or you think you could do that. Either a, either a physical thumbs up or a Slack thumbs up, whatever is easier. <laughs> cool. Seeing some thumbs ups, I'm going to keep going. Okay, HTTP responses. So this is the other side. So remember the request goes from the client to the server, the response goes from the server to the client. So the response has some similar information. Um, you'll notice that you have some something that looks kind of a lot like headers here. And you've got something that sort of looks like a body at the bottom. Um, and you'd be right, those are, so you have, I, I, you probably noticed I called them request headers and request body because there's also response headers and response body. Um, but they sort of serve very similar functions. It's just in the other way. So the, the response, if the server wants to send data back to the, uh, send data from the server back to the client, sort of to, to answer that query, that this data that comes back to the server or back to the client, excuse me, comes back in the body. And if the server wants to include sort of metadata about that, something like information about the server that was that returned the response or maybe the current date on the server. Those might be response headers. Um, however, though, there's some new fields here we haven't talked about. Well, there's also the HTTP version. We talked about that. But and, and the same sort of thing. Um, typically, this ends up matching the, the version that was sent in the request. So in our case, it's always going to be HTTP 1.1. But um, there's also the this, this status code. And this is a bit of a new thing. So I bet most of you, if I say something like 404 not found or 500 server error or 200 OK, you maybe have heard these phrases before. Often people who've used the internet run, have run across these. And what these are is these are, th th these are examples of HTTP status codes. An HTTP status code is sort of a way by which a server can indicate to the client how the request was processed. Was the request processed successfully? Did it fail in some way? And sort of if it failed, why did it fail? And the idea is the server can send back the status code. The client can parse it and can understand, oh, this failed because I didn't provide all the right information to the server as part of my request. Or maybe you'll you get back a status code that says the server just didn't process my data correctly and you just need to try again for some reason. Or maybe you get a status code back that says like everything went perfectly. Um, these status codes here are some of the more popular ones. So 200 okay, 404 not found, 403 forbidden, 401 unauthorized, 500 server error. But in general, status codes end up being three digits. Um, they usually start with a two, a four, or a five. Um, and then the sort of the second two digits end up like counting up from like 200, 201, 202, 203 um, to sort of mean certain things. And uh, I'm going to give you a little trick here. So status codes that start with a two, like 200, 201. In general, that means the response, the, the, or the, the server processed the request prop, like correctly and the response came back okay. So if you get back a response from a server, with a status code of 200, that's great. 201, that's great. 202, that's great. Um, if you get back a, a status code with the starts with a four, that usually means that the, the server was unable to, be, to process the request, but it's because the, the client did not include all the proper information in the request. So imagine, let's say you needed to include information in like a header to tell a server like, stuff about what they needed to do, or you, you wanted to include information in the body or something like that. And let's say as the client, you forgot to do that. The server might give you back a 400, which just means bad request. And it might tell you like, oh, bad request 400 and the body of the, the of, in the response could say something like, 
you didn't include information that was required for this request. So a 400 generally means that the user or the client didn't include information in the request that needed to be included. And then a status code that starts with a five, that means that there was an error and it was a server's fault. So in other words, the client sent all the proper information, the server just tried to process it and just failed to process it correctly. So that could be something like the server was just written kind of poorly, or that could be something like there was sort of network instability, or it could be something like the server depends on an external service and that external service isn't working right. Um, this isn't like a hard and fast rule. Often people break this a little bit, but in general, this is a good rule of thumb. And I think from at least this week, it should service you pretty well. Okay, I'm not gonna go into it now, um, but there's a list of HTTP status codes here on Wikipedia. If you really want to get into this stuff and really read into it, uh, you're welcome to go through this list. It is long, but is a fun read in a certain sort of definition of fun. <laughs> um, cool, okay, before we get to Postman, um, one last thing here, um, and that's that uh, you're going to end up memorizing a lot of the HTTP status codes with time. Um, I've sort of, in sort of my years of doing this, it's just things that I, I just can recall a lot of them off the top of my head. Like I run across something like, a 504, and I know that means gateway timeout, and I know that it means like this certain set of problems is, is going on. Um, I will say the ones the ones that are probably most important to know off the top of your head though would be two, 200, okay. That means that everything is like everything went great, like all good. Uh, the other one that's probably important to know are some of the, the 400s. Um, 400 bad request just generally means like something bad happened, like the client sent some bad information. It's sort of a generic, like bad information was sent. Um, the other 400 one that you're probably gonna run across a decent amount is 404, 404 not found. And usually what that means is you made a request to a path. So like you made a get request to like slash users, but that path slash users doesn't exist or the server doesn't know what to do with that path, usually because it's incorrect. So it'll send you back a 404 and that means, oh, that path doesn't exist. Um, but I would say in general, those are probably the most important ones right off the bat, um, but 200 is probably the most important even of all those. So anyway, um, okay. So uh, that is sort of a breakdown of HTTP requests and responses. I think you all are probably ready for me to stop talking. Um, I'm ready to stop talking. So let's actually make some requests. How does that sound? Good? Cool. Okay. This is where we get to Postman. So Postman is a tool that you can use to graphically make requests. Think of it sort of like a program like VS Code or like a sort of a program you download that gives you sort of a bunch of boxes. You can enter all the information about a request. And then you can click a button, a send button, and it'll kick off that request to a server, get back the response and show you the response all visualized for you nicely. So we're gonna use it today a little bit in class. And then we're going to uh, use it for the homework assignment tonight as well. Um, okay. So would, let's see, how would it be best to do this? If you have gotten Postman installed locally and you've been able to open it up and like see something, like see the window open, would you be able to give me a thumbs up in Slack just so I can get a rough idea of how many people we're good with? Or, let's see. Well, Slack or Zoom, or Ryan. Or, sorry, yeah, Zoom. Wrong, wrong word, thank you. Um, okay. Let's, this might be easier to do in the reverse. Who has not been able to get it, get it installed? Um, either speak up or post a reaction or, okay, Danielle, yes, you'd post in, in Zoom. Um, anybody else? Shantina, okay.
Uh, I got it. Uh, my thumbs up. It looks like it had just canceled out or something. Okay. Okay. Um, I got it open, but I'm still creating an account. Okay. There's, I think there's a way by which you can skip the account creation process if you want. Not 100% on that though. Um, I tried to go through and like set it up from scratch earlier today and it wouldn't let me because I've sort of had it installed and I couldn't like fully uninstall it. So unfortunately, I'm not exactly sure what the, the full out of the box setup process looks like, but it should be pretty intuitive, I would think. Um, okay, so it looks like it's just Stephanie and Shantina. Um, Shantina, is there anything, uh, any sort of problems you ran into that uh, we can help you out with or? Uh... No, I'm, I'm retrying it again now just to see. <clears throat> okay. Um, and Stephanie, with the whole uh, running out of space thing, um, were, are you sort of um, still working? Danielle. Oh, Danielle, yeah. Um, were you able to sort of work through that or are you sort of still working through that? I'm still working through it, thank you. Okay, so how about this then? I think we'll, we'll keep moving forward. Um, and once you're sort of at a point where we've got it installed, maybe uh, put a message in the chat and we can maybe uh, have uh, Mel sort of help catch you up. All right, we'll do. Cool. Okay. So I've got Postman here. Um, so open up Postman. Now, uh, oh gosh, so many little like Zoom controls I have to manage on top of this thing. It's okay. I ran into an issue. Um, mm -hmm. So I was able to create the account uh, through my Gmail. So where it says, uh, once you create it again, so it's saying create account via web browser. Uh, if your web, if your browser hasn't opened Postman for you to sign in yet, open it manually. So when I go to open it manually, it gives me a 403 error. And it says sign in link already used. Browser based sign in links can only be used once. Try signing in again. Ah, yeah. You probably have to do it again. Okay. Maybe. So uninstall it and download it again. No, I mean, like, you should, I would guess you can probably sign in again okay, let me see. somewhere. Oh, wait, never mind. I think I was, okay, okay, here it is. All right, let me try one more time. Okay, I'm going to keep keep plugging along here. So in Postman, um, probably the most important thing to know about is this bar right here along the top. Um. So this is, you've got a bunch of sort of tabs you can open here and every tab sort of represents a request that you're sort of working on. So I'm gonna click on this here and I'm going to, uh, oh yeah, Mel made a good point. Make sure you move Postman to your applications folder after you download, uh, download it. Don't just run it from your downloads folder. That's really, really important. Um, also, I also wanna mention here too, like if I'm sort of like little fatigued, I just got done with having COVID like a week and a half ago. So I'm a little, not quite at hundred percent right now. So just, I want to apologize in advance for that. Um, um, but, uh, okay. I have a quick question before you start. Yep. So um, I just made mine, but it said, do you want me to just put, I know how to use Postman first? Uh, sure. Oh, Sorry, I don't have a good answer to you there. Uh, maybe, maybe can you share your screen? Um, it's you're sharing your screen, so I can't okay. share my screen. It's just it's it's not that big of a. Hold it's on. It's basically asking if she wants to go through the tutorials or not. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, you can skip those. We're I'm I'm basically gonna give you the tutorial here. Okay, great. Okay, so once you've clicked on that uh that new button in the tab bar, you get this sort of request here, and you can open up as many of these requests as you want. You can sort of jump between them. Um, so, uh, where's my presentation here? Here it is. Okay. So this top section here is the request section. And the bottom section here is the response section. 
So what that means is all the sort of information about your request, you're going to enter up here. And then you're going to click send, this blue send button over here. When you click that, you're going to see all the information about your response down here. So for example, let's say I make that request uh, that I did in the web browser. So um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm typing here in a second, but I just want to just give a high level just so you can see how this works. And I click send. Now down here, you can see I've got a bunch of stuff down in the bottom. You can also see the response, the 200 OK. And you can see when I hover over it, it gives me like a bunch of sort of explanation, like this is what a 200 OK means, which is kind of nice. Um, OK, cool. So that, that's, that's really like at the high, the high level how it works. Um, okay, so there's a bunch of different boxes here, um, and they match pretty closely to what we talked about. So you've got method, you've got request headers, you've got request body, you've got like things like response status code, response body, you've got response headers too right here. Um, there's one thing here though we didn't talk about, and that's URL, and that's you enter in this box uh, next to the send big send button here. And we haven't talked about that yet. So I'm going to talk about it now. So URL, these, this should probably be pretty familiar for anyone who have used the web. It's the thing you put in the bar at the top of the web browser to tell the web browser where it's going to go. Um, but more concretely, or more sort of with an engineering definition, it's a, a means by which you can combine sort of the IP address or domain, sort of like where you want to make the request to, the path, and then a bunch of other parameters into sort of one big string that you can sort of give to something like Postman or a web browser. So you can think of it as sort of a way by which you're combining all that information together. So there's some things we haven't talked about here. I mean, path, this should look pretty familiar, like students one or like users, or it has a slash that so could just be like slash. Um, that part shouldn't be all that surprising. Um, but there's a couple other things. HTTP colon slash slash. I brought that up sort of at the beginning of the, of the class. This is what's called the protocol part of the URL. Um, and this sort of determines some underlying network details about how the request is, where the request is sent and how sort of the, the connection is made between the client and the server. You might also come across HTTPS colon slash slash. Um, this sort of is a more like, I guess you could say, secure way of communicating from the client to the server. For this week, we're pretty much going to be using HTTP exclusively. Um, well, I guess we're going to be using HTTPS a little bit at the end, but pretty much HTTP exclusively. And for most of the rest of careers and code, you're going to use HTTPS. At the, it really is not going to make that much of a difference. It's just sort of the difference between typing HTTP and HTTPS. You're not like, other than that, there's, you're not going to see any practical difference in using something like Postman or other ways we're going to make requests later on in the, in the week. Um, Example.com is a domain name. So you can put a lot of sort of things in this green spot here. Um, the, the thing you're going to see most often though is a domain name. Um, and that's probably something you're familiar with as sort of an internet user. Sort of you have these things like google.com, example.com, um, careersandcode.org. And they sort of have like this sort of text string dot something. You can even have these things where you can have subdomains. You can have like subdomain.careersencode.org. Um, but either way, what, what that actually is, is going to be a little bit, uh, a little more than we, we're going to have time to get into this week. But at a high level, it's sort of telling the uh, client exactly what computer to connect to and make the request to. So example.com behind the scenes points to a server at a certain location on the web somewhere. Um, Google.com points to a different server on the web somewhere. Careersandcode.org points to another server. Um, there is a special value here you are going to be using later on called localhost. And I don't know if Max has gone, gone into this at all yet. I would guess probably not. Maybe a little bit. But this oh. This is, a, this is a value that says basically, make a request to my local system, make a request to my local computer. So if you run a web server on your local computer and you make a request to localhost or, or something like HTTP colon slash slash localhost, 
slash users, you're going to make a request to a web server running on your local system to, uh, you're going to make a get request to slash users. So that comes up and is going to be important later on, but for this, this week, we're not really going to have to deal with it at all. Um, okay. S students one or the path part, that probably makes sense. The last part, you've heard me mention query parameters a few times now. Um, so query parameters are a way by which you can include extra metadata in the URL, sort of extra sort of key value parameters. And they sort of tend to follow this format where it starts with a question mark, and then you sort of have a key equal the value. And then you have an ampersand, and then the key equal the value, and then an ampersand key equals value, and it kind of goes on and on like that. Um, you might ask, what's the point of query parameters? Like, why is why is it a sort of a, like, isn't this sort of what headers do? Like, why would you need to include these sort of things? Um, it's a good question. I think it's one or more variety. Some people prefer to use them for certain things. Some people prefer to use headers for certain things. Um, you'll sort of, I think as we go through the week, start to get an idea of where they sort of get used, sort of what sort of functions they use. but. At the end of the day, it's just another way by which you can provide information from the client to the server. Um, okay. And oh, I should also mention the way this is actually like the way this is actually included in the HTTP request is let's see if it let me select it. Yes, there it will. This whole section here is included in that in that uh, path section in the request. So if you enter something like this URL into the URL bar. Behind the scenes, the request is going to be made is a get to with this as the path. So that's how these query parameters actually make their way to the server. They're part of the, the they're part of the path. Okay. I think at this point we've talked about enough where we can actually make some requests with Postman, which is exciting. So I'm going to start by doing a demo for you. And then I'm going to have you guys do some some demos or do some, some exercises on your own. Um, okay, before I do that, um, as part of this module or part of this section of careers and code, I set up a web server of my own that we're going to make some requests to, and it is located at the URL or the domain name careersandcode.ml. So if you <clears throat> go to careersandcode.ml in your web browser, you'll see something kind of like this. Um, and that's because it's the web server I set it up. Yay. <laughs> um, so we are going to start by making a demo request to this web server. So let me go over to Postman here. I'm going to clear out sort of the in progress request we had and make a new one. Okay. So the method is going to be get. Methods get. The domain name is careersincode.ml. Careers in code.ml. Okay. The protocol is HTTP. So if remember, we go back over to our URL thing here. So the protocol goes before. So HTTP colon slash slash. And then the path is slash fruit. So path goes at the very end. So slash fruit. Okay. Okay, so I entered all the things. Let's click send. There we go. So I got back a response from the server. I got back a status, 200. So that's good. Things worked. Um, I got back a body in my response that has the text string apples, oranges, Bananas with bananas misspelled. I forgot to fix that from the last cohort. Oh, dang it. Um, okay, well, I'm a bad speller. You're probably going to run across it more in this week. I'm sorry in advance. Um, I think this is spelled wrong. Maybe it, maybe I just can't. No, know. it's spelled right. I sing the Gwen right. Stefani song, B-A-N-A-N-A-S. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, I always think there's two N's in bananas like in a row. But no, that's okay. Cool. Okay, I fixed it. It used to be spelled wrong. Um, okay, wonderful. Um, now you'll also see, I'll go over to headers here and you can see I've got a bunch of headers back from the response. Um, some of these, we're gonna talk more about what these mean later this week, but some of these like 
are maybe kind of interesting. Like we've got date here. So this is like the date that was that it was on the server, the time that was in the server when it uh, uh, when the response came back. Um, yeah, and we've got things like server, like this is sort of the, the information about the server. It's sort of running on Ubuntu, getting served by Nginx. Um, yeah, I mean, we're going to talk about more about this later this week, so I'm not going to get too much into it. But yeah, that's, uh, that's sort of our first request here. So I would like to start with everyone who has Postman running to try to make this request, try to replicate what I just did right now. I think it should be pretty doable. Um, if, you, if you have any trouble here, let me know. Uh, Mel or I can jump in and we can try to, to help you out. I think I might have missed a step after you put the code, like the HTTPS in, and I didn't see what you did after that. Uh, let's see. Oops. Wait, why is it? Oh, there we go. Um, you're talking about... Like I, I typed, well, I did the get and then I did the URL and then was there a step that I missed after that? No, that's all you need. I mean, that's all, I, that's all I said here. Get oh, domain okay. name protocol path. Oh, yeah. all right. Well, I got an error. Ooh, what error did you get? Oh, it's called, it's an error connect e con refused. Ah, can you share your screen? Oh, sure. Ah, uh, make that HTTP, not HTTPS. Cool. Thank you. Yep. I have a question. Yep. Um, so I, I got my account set up and I'm signed in. How do you get from the uh, the the start screen to open a request? Uh, let's share your screen. Let's figure it out. Um, I'll be honest. I don't have an answer for you off the top of my head because I wasn't able to go through the full setup process before the class. Um, but I, it should be pretty doable, I think. So okay. I'm here. Um, try going up to the upper left-hand corner and going to home. Is this, are you clicking on home? Yeah. Okay. Maybe mm -hmm. then under get started with postman where it says start with something new, click on the create new. Uh, where was that? Um, so it says, good evening, Doug R. Yeah. Below that, it says get started with postman. Oh, yes. Enter that start. Yeah, right there. Try that. Okay. Uh, and then click the X in the upper right hand corner of that thing. There we go. Um, and click the, click the plus button in the. Yeah. Okay. And if you want to collapse this thing on the left hand side, if you click on collections, it should uh, minimize. Uh, oh, I thought it did. Or yeah, I guess you can just drag it and make it smaller too. There we go. Yeah, sweet. I think you've uh, got things set up a little bit differently. I think you're using this thing called a Postman workspace, but I don't think it should be a big deal. Um, oh no. No, I think you're fine. I just want to, I think you just did something a little bit fancier than I did, <laughs> which is cool. Well, I just, I just, gave them a name and a username and password and it took me to this. Like I just signed up yeah. for an account and this is where I went. I, I think what you've, you've got is fine. You should be good. Okay. And just on a side note, that little icon in the bottom left corner, if you click on that, that'll open and close the dog down. Uh, down at the bottom. All that'll, the way down. That'll open and close it. Ooh, very nice. Thank you, Larry. You're welcome. Okay, I will I will uh, try it from here. Sweet, cool.
It worked for me. I got apples, oranges, bananas. Very nice. Cool. Okay. I think uh, let's do a round of, uh, of thumbs up reactions. How's that been going for everybody? Has everyone been able to make that request work? Okay. I'm seeing largely thumbs ups. So I think I'm going to keep moving in a forwardly direction here. Okay. So I've got two more requests here that I've, I've sort of outlined. Um, I'm going to have you all try to make them on your own without my help. The second one's going to be a little bit trickier than the first one. Um, the first one's pretty close to what we just did, and I don't think it should be a challenge. Um, but the second one's a post and has some sort of extra information. Um, and we, if we need to go through it together, we can. Um, but then after this, I'm going to uh, set you loose on your homework. And I actually, I guess after this, probably, uh, no, we still have a little bit of time. Yeah, I'll set you loose on your homework, and we can uh, see how that goes. I got to be honest, I was actually expecting this to take longer today. Um, but I think uh, made, we made really good time here. Well, you'll be able to see who done who who has done it correctly, or we have to share a screen for you to see. Uh, if you get back a two hundred, it was done correctly. I mean, I'm not I'm not sort of grading these things here. I just really I'm trusting that you can judge that you did them correctly if you get back a two hundred. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're welcome to send me a screenshot in Slack or Mel or share your screen or yeah, we can take a look. Um, how, how do you set the body? Yeah, good question. So you go to here, body. Then it's really important to select raw. Okay. And it's going to have a thing here. You also want that to be text. And then once you've done that, you can type whatever text you want in the body. Got it. Thank you. Yep. Can you put the um the other words oh. back up? Yeah, yeah now sorry. I forgot what the body was supposed to be. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I just got confused. So uh I just so you go to body and then click on raw. Were we doing something there or are we just doing these requests that are shown on the screen right now? You're doing the request that are shown on the screen right now. It just turns oh. out that in order for the second request, you need to enter a body. Doug was asking me some information about how to do that. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. When you say the two two hundred. It's the two hundred. Okay, next to the three seventy ms. The the three seventy ms part isn't really all that important. It's just the two hundred okay part. Yeah, that's what you're looking for. Something like this. How how do you add the body again? Because I had an error. Yep. So if you uh, if you're in here. You go to body, you mm -hmm. select raw, okay. and you make sure it says text here and you start typing in the box. Also, I'll keep, keep in mind, if you have uh, like switch the tab here, it'll put a little green dot next to body if body's active. No, I got it. I just didn't know where I was entering, which you uh, choose, but you said raw, so I got you. Thank cool. you. 
yeah, I, I just want to bring this up because like if, so, if let's say you happen to be, uh, you have like something in the body and then you go to make another request and you forget it's in there. Like this is just sort of a helpful UI hint to say like, oh, there's something in the body. You need to go in there and sort of clear it or like update it or whatever. Um, but yeah. Okay, how's everybody doing? It seems like pretty well. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. So we did two things. Is it like GitHub to where like it can track? So like it had apples, bananas, and then something. And will it be like a hello or? No? Yeah. So we're going to talk about this later in the week. Um, the answer I will give you, though, is yes, it's totally possible to, to sort of have multiple requests, like to keep track of sort of some state for a user and sort of have multiple requests sort of like do sa the same things with that sort of state. Um, and that's how a lot of a lot of web applications work. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, could you put it on that uh, that one screen just for a couple more Yeah, seconds. sorry about that. I keep jumping oh, off that. Look, looks good. <laughs> All right. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I heard you, I was trying to get the fruit up. So I heard you say something about raw and I, and I think I missed, I, when we type in where it says raw, should it come back, can I get? It shouldn't. Um, so what I was talking about with the, the raw thing is Doug had asked me for request number two, how you enter a body in Postman for HTTP request. And what I had said is you can go here to body. You can then select raw here and you can enter the body you'd like to include in your request here. So like body here. Um, however, even if, you, oh. if you've done, oh, go ahead. You still had the fruit stuff in there. Oh, so, I do, yeah. Oh, you just right. oh, so I sent it and it came back. Can I get raw? So okay, I understand. I I I, I maybe I missed. I was I heard part of what you were saying, but I didn't hear all of it. So maybe I wasn't supposed to hit send on the raw. Uh, you do want to hit send when you want to send your request. I would say if you're getting if if you've entered sort of a a body for request number two and you're not getting back what you think you should be getting back. Make sure what's in this top bar here is correct. The method's correct and the URL's correct. Okay. Because I had the fruit and then it changed it to raw. Jesse, if you said you can't get it, it's supposed to be a post. So did you put post in your um, request for the second one with the uh, body yellow? I don't know. I, I, I was listening. I, would, I heard part of what was going on. Maybe I just just stick to what's on the slide and then I'll. Right, but um, say if you look at your screen, see where it says, where, where it okay. says get and then the URL. Does oh, your, your state no. post and then the URL? For the second one, it should say post instead of get. You got to hit the arrow drop down next to get. And then hit post. Yes. Then hit send. I still say I cannot get raw. And this is the part where you do the body. Right. Maybe I maybe I, I only I was old, I was list I wasn't fully listening because I was trying to do something else. So maybe I'm just in the wrong space. So I I, I don't want to like get too deep into it. Cause I, I think I did something wrong. Let's do this. It sounds like generally most folks have gotten through this. Let's do three, go through these both together as a class. Just make sure everyone's got it. And then after that, I'll uh, set you off on your homework, which is, I think, like four or five of these requests that are a little bit more complicated. OK. Um, uh, how do we clear? So once we look for something, I'm just trying to see how do we clear it out? Where's the? Uh, probably the easiest way is if up here in the tab bar, you close, you click X on the request. Okay. And you make a new one. That's probably the easiest way to reset to a blank slate again. So don't save the changes. 
right. I don't save the changes. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's let's go through this here. So request one method get method get. That's pretty easy. Um, the main name and protocol HTTP careers and code on ML HTTP colon slash slash careers in code dot ml path slash apples apple as you can see i've, I've done this before um i click send and there we go apples cool you can tell i'm really creative going with the fruit um okay i think when i was writing this i was eating some fruit and you know i was like that could be a really good theme it wasn't that good of a theme um so request two um, I'm going to close this and make a new one here. Uh, come on. Too many screen overlays. Okay, there we go. Okay, so request two methods post. Domain name, careersandcode.ml, protocol HTTP. So same thing or the sort of thing. You probably um, already explained this to us, but why aren't we using the S anymore? Yeah, good question. So you're going to run across certain domains that require HTTPS and certain that don't. I'm not for a really bad reason. It's that I needed to set this up quickly. and I didn't have the time to fully set up all the HTTPS stuff. And in the past, when I've taught this, I went a bit more into the network details. And for that, it not being HTTPS was important. So I didn't have all the configuration ready to go. So in this case, it's HTTP. And for most things you do locally or sort of in a context where it doesn't really, it's not really critical that the information being sent to the server is super private. Like if you have it locally, you're sending the information all within your local system. It's never really exiting your computer. So it's not really that important that it's not encrypted. Um, and if you're sending it to this, like we're not sending any sort of like it's all toy information, so it's not that important. Um, yeah. So it's that, that's why. Um, I will go into it a little briefly though. Like, what is the HTTPS? What does that mean? So, when you make a request from a client to a server and, and they get their response back from the server to the client, behind the scenes, what's going on there is it's sending data over a network. And it's important to know that when you send data from your computer to some server on a network, by default, it's making its way across that network through a bunch of hops through a bunch of other servers and when it does that that data is being sent unencrypted it's just sort of raw plain text and that's often fine in like a lot of information is not really all that critically private but there's a lot of information especially web information these days where like you're filling out a form you put in a credit card number you don't want that sort of thing sent unencrypted like that's kind of bad so that's why often you hear people say like, oh, make sure you see the little lock in your web browser when you're filling out the, the credit card form or whatever. And that's because you want to make sure that website is using HTTPS, that sort of more secure implementation of the protocol behind the scenes, if you're doing things like entering secure information into a form. Um, it's just, it's a little bit fancier to set up. It's totally doable. And I think later on in the class, you're actually going to go through doing it. So it's, it's like, I really don't have a good reason. It's 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 like laziness. I'm sorry. No, um, um, thank you though. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's really all it is. Um, okay. Um, so back over to this. So we've entered our domain name or protocol path slash echo slash echo. Okay, you can also see I've done this before here. Um, body hello. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here to body. A bit of raw go hello so post careers and code.ml slash echo and then body raw hello click send see if we get back here hello and it just so happens the way this works just takes the response or the request body you send and returns that back in the response body so i could go change this to hello world that would also work but Whatever, that's just an implementation detail. Um, but that th those are the two requests. Um, any questions from anybody before we move on?
Okay. So should we always okay. run this. Should we run a test before we start, or can we just start? Like I know when we go into VS Code, we always do hello world, and then that comes up. So should we? Is this an environment where we need to run a test first to make sure that we're not putting in a bunch of code that's not going to work? Or is that is this different? I would say in general, once you open up Postman and you enter all the information in, it should like always work. There's there's not really like if if it, the request doesn't work. I would say the most likely two reasons why it's not working is because you don't have an internet internet connection or your internet connection is not set up properly or something like that, or oh. because you entered information incorrectly into Postman. Um, oh. and so in part two, so <laughs> when we did GitHub, there was GitHub that was actually online in the web browser, and then we had GitHub desktop. Do you think that this postman that you, I know you said something to Doug about how his looks different. Is this like a postman desktop that we're seeing? Is that why it might be different? Good question. So I would say that think of postman as sort of a standalone application, like you would something like VS code or like Microsoft word. Mm -hmm. It's, it's sort of an application that specializes in making HTTP requests. So in the case of uh, of like GitHub Desktop, that's also an app, a standalone application, but that sort of primarily interfaces with GitHub. Like it's sort of like a, a client for GitHub. Um, so it's sort of like GitHub branded. It sort of interacts with GitHub directly. Postman isn't is isn't really tied to a specific web service like that. It's more just a tool for making HTTP requests in the same sort of way that VS Code is a tool for writing software or Microsoft Word as a tool for making Word documents. Okay. Is that helpful? Yes. Cool. Um, so I'm not sure if I, I missed it, but uh, does that answer the question why yours is open as an application and for me, Postman opens in a browser? Yes. Um, So Postman over the years, they've sort of iterated down a lot and done sort of a lot of changes to it. Like you've probably noticed the screenshots in my, my slide deck are a little bit different than what is I was sort of using here. Um, Postman has both a web version and a desktop version. If you're using the web version, you probably want to use the desktop version for this week. There are certain limitations the web version has we might run into. Not 100% on that, but it would be good to use the desktop version if possible. And how do, um, how do I switch? At, Should I ask you again during the break? Say that again? Should I ask during the break? I, I don't want to take up class time with my specific problem. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, I think that that makes sense. Okay. okay. So uh, let me, okay, here's a question. So I tried to set up an, a homework assignment with Canvas or this that, that like learning management system thing. I'm not all that familiar with it. Would somebody be able to log in and see if you can see an assignment under week 10 that was created that you should have visibility for? I currently can't see it. Okay. I'm yeah, I don't see anything. I just but... see the last two that we had already. Okay. Look the A41. I, th I think there's like a little checkbox next to it where you have to make it public. I thought I clicked that. I did get but... a notification earlier, but it's still not up there. Okay. Oh I'm no, I, talk... I think I think it is. I think Zach called it out. It's it's you a said A41. Oh yeah, Corey said yeah. It's down eight four one. It's there, but yeah. it, it doesn't give you like an option. Oh, never mind. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So you can see it. The it's weird because 
on this computer, I'm not able to see it and I can't figure out why. So I feel like I've done something wrong. But if so, if you go into that, there should be a link in there, sort of a link to a, a GitHub document. This document, which I will also post in the Slack channel. So these are the exercises for today. Um, and this is pretty much the activity we have for the rest of the class, sort of to go through these um, and to, to make them, uh, make each request. And sort of, I, I talk about it at the top here, but for these, I really would like to see sort of a screenshot of Postman for everyone you've made. Um, and you can take those screenshots, you can sort of zip them up and upload them to, to Canvas or give them to me however you think it would be easiest. But I just want to sort of see some proof that you've made each of the requests. Um, and a screenshot is probably the easiest way. But yeah, um, so your goal is going to be to go through all these. Um, if you have questions, let me or Mel know. I'd love to help you with them out. Um, and I think... Uh, probably in about maybe 15 minutes, we're going to have our break. I think that's what Max said it normally is. Um, do I have that right? Usually at seven. Usually at seven. Okay. So we'll do it right now then. How about that? Yeah. So let's take a break for how long is it normally? <laughs> I'm, I remember what it was for last cohort, but 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So let's take a break for 20 minutes and we get back. Uh, we'll work on these guys. Sounds good. Um, one quick thing, uh, the assignment is in, um, Canvas, uh, but there's no button to submit the assignment or start the assignment. It's just a link that doesn't go anywhere. Well, it's, it's like the, there's no hypertext link for it. Like the actual okay. thing out is there, but. Okay. Yeah, it just says, like it's an upcoming assignment. You can click on the link to get, so, so you can copy the link to get to what you call it, but you're not able to turn it in or anything, like you said. Okay. Um, you can access though, you can you can view the 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 instructions though, right? Like on GitHub. Like I can view the link to yep. I can get okay. the link to get so how about this? For now, just go through it and sort of keep track of, of all the sort of screenshots and the requests you're making. Um, I'm gonna talk to Max after this. There's something I must be missing here that I need to click somewhere. Once I do that, you should be able to turn it in. Um, I'll make sure to do that right after the class so that uh, you, you can turn those in uh, sort of as soon as possible. Um, sorry in advance though, a um, little bit unfamiliar with Canvas and trying to get up to speed here. Sweet, okay. Uh, let's take our break. Um, we're gonna be back at uh, 7.20. Um, Doug, if you want to chat about what you were running into, um, now is a fine time where we can do it later or whatever. So I, I closed the browser window that Postman was running in, and behind it was the Postman app, like oh. desktop. I, <laughs> cool. I don't, know, I don't know what happened there. I don't know why. I don't know why it launched in a browser, um, huh. and I just, I just did a test. Um, request and and it worked so i'm i'm up and running cool I'll sounds great if, we'll see if next time i launch it which way it comes up sweet all right thanks mm -hmm.
Okay, uh, real quick, folks. One thing, if you're still on. Um, so I just had a previous student reach out to me who saw I was teaching and mentioned that she really liked the New York Times bestsellers project and wanted me to post her example if you wanted to see another sort of case of it to sort of see how students have taken it in the past. Um, I'll post it at the end of the week too, but if you're curious, it's in the, the chat and Zoom and you can take a peek at it. I think she did a pretty good job. Um, she went a little bit more above and beyond than I did with my little example, but yeah. Anyway. Cool, thanks. Yep. Yeah, she did really good, that's Latonia, yep. He didn't stop the recording, by the way. Oh, oh yeah, stop, crap. Stop, stop, yeah, okay. Uh, do I pause or I stop? Pause it. Okay. So I uh, think I was able to uh, <clears throat> get the assignment working. I talked with Max. He told me there was a thing I didn't configure correctly. So if anyone gets an opportunity, I'd love if they could uh, check to see if the assignment's good now and they can submit something to it. Yeah, there's yeah, a there's start a assignment system. button. Cool, okay, wonderful. <clears throat> okay, so the rest of the class are gonna be working on these exercises. Um, yeah, it should be pretty self-directed, um, but if you have any problems or any questions, feel free to, uh, to chat out here or chat out or reach out to uh, Mel or I, and we'd be more than willing to try to help you out. Um, yeah, and anything you don't complete here after the, the class, which I'd imagine probably for the majority, you're going to get it all done. But anything you don't get done is, is homework. So, yeah, that's about it. Where do I find the outline? for this home for the homework because I don't see it. It should be in Canvas or in addition, I'll post it in the uh, in the channel here. I'm also post it in the chat just so we have it in all the places. Or uh, Mel posted the assignment, but I'll post the the link to. Did y'all, are you froze or? <laughs> no, I'm here.
So, Ryan, you said you do uh, JavaScript and Python, right? For the most part, yeah. Um, have you heard of PyScript? PyScript. I have it's not. Something that just re is relatively new with air quotes. I don't know how new it is, but they said it's not really like a lot of documentation. Uh, huh. Yeah, I've heard of uh, Pyodide, which is what it's powered by, it looks like. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Have you tried it out? Not yet. Um, JavaScript and <laughs> HTML, but I want to. I've been trying to do three uh, three JS. Cool. Yeah, three is pretty fun. Oops, I just uh, started again about maybe a week ago. Uh, 3JS, there's like, it's almost like they have the, uh, well, it's not almost like, they, they have the um, ability to do CSS right in the uh, JavaScript file. Yeah, sort of, effectively. Um, also, just to clarify quickly, since I got a question, a, a direct message, um, you're, you're working on the, uh, the assignment right now independently. Um, Larry, just we're, we're, we're chatting, it sounds like. Um, yeah, just, want to, just want to make it clear that's, that's what, what's to be worked on. Um, but yeah, three is pretty cool. And you can, you can uh, you're right, sort of the way you sort of end up styling things is by applying sort of properties to, to elements that are rendered in three in JavaScript. Um, that's not super unusual. A lot of sort of higher level front end frameworks end up doing something sort of like that. Okay. Um, you're gonna learn React later on um, and React does that. Oh. I feel like it's gonna be like um, when I had calculus and uh, we had to do derivatives the long way, and then we came back next class and said, "Okay, here I was doing it one step." <laughs> For sure, and a lot of software development is that, um, and it's important to do it that way because it's really good to understand the importance of like the way it's actually done behind the scenes, like in the long way, before you understand the shortcut. Um, oh. I will say, when I've taught this this sort of networking thing for careers in code in the past, the whole first day and a half to two days, I've spent just on networking, like not even talking about HTTP, like, like low level, how do computers talk to each other? And that was something I was really sad I had to strip out of it because we only had a week. Um, but I think that's really critical because without it, it's, I'm like high level glossing over things like what is HTTP? Like, what's that protocol thing mean? Like, I sort of like really went high level over URLs, didn't talk at all about like when a computer makes a connection to another computer, what actually happens? And those are like really important things, but we just don't really have time in a week to do that plus everything else. So, right. So I have um, some books from Cisco. They're probably uh, at least six, seven, eight years old. Um, would the information in there still be relevant as far as like the whole process of HTTP and handshaking and all that stuff, or has it been updated uh, so significantly that those books are obsolete? Most likely, a lot of it's still relevant. But what I would say is like, I don't know how familiar you are with networking and maybe other folks, this might mean something to some of you, but networking has what are called layers. Um, in general, for, so it's, you have from layer one to layer seven. And HTTP is sort of something that happens at layer seven. Um, in general, for everything we're gonna be, you're gonna be dealing with in careers and code, it's I think all layer seven. Um, I, before, used to go down to layer four, which sort of is like TCP, and that's sort of where, like, sort of a lot more of the fun stuff happens, but 
to answer your question, usually those networking books sort of bring you sort of through all the layers. And so what you, if you read through that, what you'll sort of get is a really dense understanding of networking. And you could answer questions like physically, sort of what physical on and offs, binary ones and zeros get sent along a networking cable. Like you can sort of go really deep into that sort of thing. I don't think it's necessarily important to go that deep, like initially. But what I do think is important, unfortunately, I wasn't able to do it for this, this sort of class, though. I think it's important to be able to go one level deeper than what you're dealing with on a day to day. Because what I find is that being able to go one level deeper gives you the ability to troubleshoot some things at that layer that sometimes affect the layer above you. Um, oh. So I don't know if that's helpful, but like there are sort of TCP, that's what the layer below sort of layer seven is. Um, there are sort of TCP layer le level stuff that you run into. And at some point, someone's probably going to run into something related to that. And maybe we'll get into it a little bit, but. All right, thank you. Yeah. Um, if you are interested in some of that stuff, um, Mac has probably mentioned this, but the careers and code uh, videos from previous cohorts are all up on YouTube. Um, I think this is going to probably end up on YouTube too eventually. Um, but once it does, uh, or you're welcome to take a look at some of those previous cohorts. And I taught this exact same module, both in cohort one and two, um, just sort of different sort of arrangements of like, I mean, if you look through it, you'll be like, wait a second, I recognize that slide sort of thing. Um, but uh, in cohort one and two, I did a much more in-depth thing on networking and TCP and all that. So if you're curious, you can take a look at that, but not required. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question for the exercises. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm on, uh, been stuck on two. Uh, it's probably simple, but for the body, uh, I went to body under the post and I'm trying to change change it uh, change it you know to copy and paste it in and I can't do it how do I do that or so you click body and then you click raw and once you've clicked raw this should be a text box down here if you have none selected this won't actually be a text box you have to click raw okay I was trying to change it in the wrong spot I went down to the body at the bottom bottom part where uh, you can't do it it says like if yeah okay yeah. so it, when i do it when i put it in raw do i still have to add the body tags to it yep. or do i just copy the quick brown fox jumped on yeah so you can this turns into a text box and you can you can copy and paste whatever you want in here or you can type whatever you want or which is a text box so but yeah you still have oh. to enter that body text in there all right thank you <laughs> Brian, I keep getting for number four, uh, 500 internal server error. Very fun. Okay. Let's share your screen. Let's see what you're doing. I do want to say that this server was written relatively quickly, and there probably are bugs in some of these endpoints. Okay. <laughs> Well, uh, you, you need to let me share. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Hmm. 
Hmm, that looks right. Yep. <clears throat> hmm. Oh, well, 12. Oh, that's wrong. The, uh, the hidden headers, those don't matter, do they? I mean, we don't. They shouldn't matter for this, no. Okay. Um, just for full disclosure, though, there are headers that are included in every request sort of by default. We're going to talk about those later this week. Um, but uh, that's, that, that's some of those headers. Um, one thing, go back over to the, the hidden headers section. Um, scroll up a little bit. The, the second from the top, where it says content type. Did you uncheck that one by chance? Oh, I probably did uh, on the, the one where it said, don't include any headers. And I uh, know it said headers eight. So I was like, oh, I got to turn off the headers. And I guess I didn't turn them all back on. Should content length also be on? Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah. Uh, try Click send now. I bet that's going to help. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Thank you. Yep. Now I have a question. Were we supposed to go in and unclick those boxes? Uh, no. You shouldn't have to. Um, so Doug, so Doug was being extra. <laughs> Doug was being extra. I, well, because I I couldn't get it to work, and I thought, oh, maybe that's what it meant by no headers. So. And all mine worked, so I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> so I mean, was I supposed to click boxes? I thought the same thing at first, Doug. So first I unchecked them and said, you know, they maybe were hidden for a reason. So I rechecked them and then just did the request. <laughs> That's what I, I did, but I apparently did not recheck them all. Yeah, so to talk I, I, a little bit. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, I, I was able to do all four. So I thought, so I thought as soon as Doug asked a question, I thought I did something wrong. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, if you got back good, uh, the response code, status codes that start with two, you're most likely doing it right. Um, oh, okay. So it just seemed too easy. For, well, not easy, but it just seemed like it went too well. No mistakes, no nothing. I was like, something well, is wrong. Something might not be uh, right. You're doing a good job then. I mean, okay. I, I'll, I'll be honest. Like, I'm starting this off somewhat easy. Like, today there wasn't any, there was no like code involved. It was like, it's because it's going to get, it's going to get more involved later this week. I want to sort of give you some, like, it's really important that you sort of get these concepts down and it's important enough. I'm willing to spend a whole day, like to make sure that you got them. So like there's an expectation going forward. Then I say something like status code or request or response. Like it just instantly, you know what that means. Okay. Um, I do want to quickly touch on those hidden headers thing because this is something Postman does is a little bit weird. So I mentioned that there are usually when you make a request and, and the response comes back, there are headers that are included by default in that request and there are headers that are included by default in that response. We actually have a whole section later this week to talk about some of these headers because they're kind of important. Um, but there are some headers that are included that are sort of standard headers you'll see in almost every request. Um, things like, Doug, you saw there that content type and that content length. Those are really important headers. And if you don't include them, the surfer often can get confused. Um, I'm going to elaborate on confused later this week, but that, that's why that, like, in general, like those headers, you just want to include in every request. So hopefully that's helpful. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Hey, so what does this mean if I um I unchecked all the uh, 
the headers, but it's still giving me a, a 400 bad request. For which, ex which example or which exercise? Um, this is for, oh, for three, wait, but okay, there was another part to it as well, hold on. So for number three, there's sort of two sections. In the first section, the idea is you're try, supposed to try to fetch the data or make a request to get the data without a password. And then the second request you make with the password. So the request without the password is going to fail. Um, because you didn't specify the proper authentication information. Um, okay. So that could potentially be what's going on there. Take a look at the response body and see if it sort of is, uh, it sort of indicates like the, between the status code and the response body, something along the, effect, the line of you didn't include the right authentication information or like password or something like that. Okay, let's see. All right, I'm lost right now. Okay. Like I share my screen? Yeah, share your screen. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> oh, man. Okay, so I have that lockbox. I'm in headers right now. So I know I said none. I made sure to uncheck all of them. Was I not supposed to do that or? So I'm realizing maybe that none was the, uh, was a poor choice of word. <laughs> um, okay, I sort I'm of gonna... meant by that, don't not for you to not add any sort of user specified headers. Yeah, add, add all that, that stuff back in. Um, One second, all right. Okay. There we go. Um, so I got to add the password now. Right. Take a look at the status. Unauthorized. So it starts with a four. So that means you didn't specify the information you needed. You look at the body instead of just saying like you didn't specify the right password. So. Does sort of that that response kind of make sense to you? I I guess where do I uh, add the password? At? Uh, take a look at the instructions. Instructions. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, where is it said? So exercise three. You did the first. Okay, yeah, I'm looking at exercise three. All right. So once you've done that, try. So. Okay, but where do I add it? At? So. Uh, I'm trying to figure out. Remember the headers have a key and a value. I did that. It mines did not work for the key nor the value. So I don't know if I put it in the wrong spot. All right, you gotta explain this to me and, and baby steps right now. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so if you take a look at the, well, let's we'll start with here. Headers for HTTP, there's a key section and a value section. Every sort of header entry has a key part, then a value part. Mm -hmm. So if you want to enter a header, a custom header, you've sort of got to enter your own key and then your own value. Um, in this case here, for the first section, he did that, he did that all right. Um, you see the second section now. So it says you need to make a, a, a request with a method of get, a path of slash lockbox, Okay. So you've got both of those already entered on the left side, right? Wait, this is the same, like this is all in the same exercise, right? Okay. Yep, same exercise. Okay. But now it says you need to specify a custom header with the header name of authorization, header value of super secret. Maybe better, it would have been better for me to say key there instead of name. Key. Oh, okay, okay, never mind. My bad. So just add them right. Would I add them to here? Uh, I yep, guess exactly. Let me see that. 
There you go. All right. Appreciate that. Yep. Mine is saying bad request. For which exercise? Three, part two. Three, part two. Okay. You want to share your screen? Yes. Drop it. Okay. So go over to the body section in the response. Uh, in the response, not the request. Uh, yeah, right there. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now go over to headers in the request. Uh, in the request, not the response. Yes. Okay. So take a look at the headers you've entered. So you've entered three custom headers. You've entered one called authorization that has an empty value. You've entered one with an empty or an empty key with a value of super secret. And you've entered one with the key of authorization and the value of super secret. This one is right, right? But these two are wrong. Exactly. Yeah. Try getting rid of those. In general, the HTTP protocols is quite picky. You need to make sure you, you sort of specify everything perfectly right. If you get something a little bit wrong, it's not going to be happy. But there you oh. go. Seems to have worked. Um, I'll also notice, quickly mention here, you see how this one gives you back a 201 created, not a 200? Mm -hmm. So 201 created is often returned back when you, something is created or someone, some sort of new resource is instantiated from scratch. So in this case, maybe it more, makes more semantic sense because a token was created or because you sort of like, looked into the, the lockbox or I don't know. Um, but you'll see that sometimes, but it starts the two. So it means it was successful. Just another sort of flavor of success. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, excuse me. Hi. Oh, hi, Ryan. Thank you. Um, so I am trying to get a, a real world application in mind for what we're doing. And oh. I am sort of confused on how we're going to get the information that we're going to be inputting. And so what I mean by that is I get that am I, I get that it's an API. But let's say if I were to connect my website to a crime data website, how would I know um, this information that I would put in to Postman in order to retrieve back the crime data information and connect it to my app? Yeah, so the short answer is what, you just, what you're asking is the subject of what we're talking about for the rest of the week. So we're going to get into it. Okay. Let, me give you, let me give you the short answer, though, because it sounds like you're a little curious. Imagine there is a way in a web browser, like in JavaScript, you can do what Postman's doing but from within JavaScript. Like Think like that sort of functionality being built into the browser, because hint, it is. Um, okay, so technically, um, for instance, for my capstone, if I'm downloading crime data from like city data web online, um, I can go using like the dev tools and look at that information and then fill it into Postman. Is that what you're saying? So that's where you could start. Yeah. And, and then what you could do is you could sort of use this built in web browser thing to make a request in your capstone project to fetch that data. Um, think of it. So it's a little fancier than this, but think of it like a function you can call or the parameters to the function call are things like method, path, headers, and the return value that comes back from the function is things, contains an HTTP response with things like 
status code, response body, stuff like that. So with something like that, now you're able to start doing things like in your website, say, oh, I want to fetch data from an external server and do that and then use that data anywhere you would use it in a, in a programming context. So you could render to the screen, you could take the data, do some math on it, and then you could render to the screen. You could take that data, use it to formulate a bunch of other requests to other services. And it's just sort of the, the uh, things you can do are sort of limitless. All right, thank you. Cool, hopefully that answered your question. It did, thank you. Ryan, I I took a look inside your um uh what the the top books what was the name of that page the New York Times bestsellers list yes yeah. um and so I looked took a look at the code inside of that is that so that's doing this in a in a web page yes what you the code you're looking at we're going to be writing something very similar in the next two days okay so we're going to learn to do that. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, like this, I mean, I realize this is a pretty straightforward day. Like this is all a lot of concepts, like Postman is a tool we're talking about. Like it's gonna get a lot more practical once you're dealing with it in code. Um, because that's really where, uh, I mean, you're, you're not a, like Postman's cool and it like lets you sort of test things out, but in practice, it's not, uh, like you're not doing anything real yet. Um, is, yeah. is Postman a tool that developers use? It is. Um, I don't personally use it because I've got some other tools I, I prefer instead, but it's used, it's kind of an industry a standard tool and used by a lot of folks. Um, and it's, but I mean, if you could, if you, if you know how to write all those same requests via code, um, what is the purpose of Postman? Just, is it just easier to test out to make sure that without writing? Yeah, the code? yeah exactly. So the, the idea being like with Postman, you can, you can type something or you can, you can enter it all into Postman instead of like a, a graphical interface, be sure you've got it right. And then sort of it's, it's, the disadvantage to writing a request directly in code is the library might be a little bit more complicated, especially for a beginner. Um, so it, it ends up being like easier to write the request in Postman to validate to make sure it works. Um, the other, so the reason why Postman is used a lot in, in sort of industry is they have some fancier features that some of you might've started to uncover if you've signed up for an account where you can do things like save requests so what you can do is you can sort of put together a library of all these requests you can make to a service, and then you can sort of share them with the members of your team. So you can have a bunch of people who are all working on an API service, and they can all share the requests they've been making. And it sort of ends up serving as a mixture of documentation and also like a test suite you can run against your application to make sure it, it like passes and sort of the, all the requests are handled properly. Um, I've never really used it for that, but at work, I know some folks who use it for that and like it a lot. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, I, I got why we're using it because <laughs> I don't know how to write that code yet, but I was wondering if, yeah, how it was used by uh, ex experienced developers. Yeah, for sure. Um, speaking of code, uh, Mel just posted some code in the chat and I want to mention something, Mel, to you real quick, because I think you noticed it reading through the presentation, but we're actually not using Axios, this cohort. We're using straight fetch. So that code might actually be a little confusing for folks if they look at it and try to reference it off what we're doing later in the week. Just a heads up. Um, 
it's probably fine, but just want to let you know that now. But yeah. Um, I have a question. Yeah. So, so uh, we're going to create uh, by the end of the week, which is next Tuesday, we're going to create these um, this New York bestseller list and we're going to be able to click in the more information and pull up Amazon. Should be able to. Okay. You sound skeptical. <laughs> I don't. I, I'm not. I just I, I just happened to click on this button and I'm saying this, this is what we're going to be doing by the end of the week. Okay. Yeah. I mean. I believe. I believe. I believe. <laughs> The, I will say the New York Times API is a little bit rough around the edges, but it provides a lot of really good data. Like that Amazon link is actually just included from the API. So what I ended up doing for that is just rendering like an A tag and just put the href and set it equal to the data I got back from the API. Like it was surprisingly straightforward. Um, most of the frustration in the past students have had with this exercise, and Mel can probably attest to it, is just like actually getting the data out of the service, like out of the New York Times. Once you do that and actually have it like the request working, it's actually kind of a lot of fun. You get to sort of like style it and you get to write a lot of CSS and it usually results in something that students are kind of proud of and want to show off, so. Okay. I mean, this, uh, you, you're saying style beyond this. This is impressive. But what I'm looking at current, I mean, if you're looking at my example, like Latonia, the who I posted hers before, like she went way uh, above and beyond what I did. Um, I, yeah, but like, let me post hers. Uh, let me see. And I did it in the channel at one point. Yeah, here we go. Uh, in the chat or the chat? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll post it again here. There we go. Yeah, she did a way better job than I did. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Oh, interesting. But you'll notice it's the same information in both services. It's just or post uh, both pages. It's just presented differently. So it should be the same information, I hope. Daddy, you can hear a sample, but let me turn it off. Well, there seems to be some kind of music playing, I think. Oh, good. There we go. That's better, I think. Oh, wait, now you're muted. I clicked on the link in her thing, and it started playing. <laughs> That's what that was. I didn't oh, mean oh, to, yeah. but it... wow. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. She has, if you click on, and it's, uh, I don't know if it was audio, if it was the audio. I just saw some headphones. So I was like, well, what is this? And I didn't know it's going to start playing music. Okay. Okay. If you um I know that I know that you said if we wanted more resources that you would um you had some. If you have like we watch YouTube videos, so if you have YouTube videos for us to watch, you can post them. If you post them, I, I think those will go like I guess in the student channel. Okay. Yeah. yeah we, so I'm, off the top of my head, it's definitely not required. But if you want to learn more about networking, some of the lower level details that we didn't get a chance to talk about today, uh, I can post some links to the previous cohort where we talked about them. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, it might, I, I think it would be worthwhile. Um, it's more just like, it's all the sort of stuff like below HTTP. So things like 
imagine you have two computers and you want to have them talk to each other, like irrespective of like web browsers, just like two computers, like how that works instead of like building from that point to like HTTP. Like we just sort of like, just said, said like, hey, there's this HTTP thing. And that was just like what today was. Um, I don't like doing that in general. Um, so mm -hmm. if, if you want to know more in the background, I can post some videos, but yeah. Definitely not required, though. Okay. Uh, Ryan, I have a quick question. My yeah. uh, laptop died. Uh, so did I miss anything? Uh, I don't think so. We've mostly just been uh, chatting about assorted software topics and answering questions about the homework assignment. Okay. Is, is this a link that you dropped in, dropped in the chat? Uh, is that something we should be working on right now? Or? Uh, the link, the link for Latonia's uh, New York Times bestseller thing. Yeah. Oh no! Someone just asked. Uh, I think Christy had asked to take a look at that, so I just reposted it. It's it's not important. Uh, all right. Cool. Cool. In general, though, uh, how did the homework assignment go? I've been noticing some people have been turning in. I think we got eight people who turned it in. So, sounds like. Uh, I, I mean, I'll go through them tonight and, and see uh, how it's been going, but I'm guessing probably pretty well. Um, cool. No, uh, I don't see any obvious disagreement with that, so I'm going to assume it went well. <laughs> Sweet. Um, so this is probably a... Uh, Wait, the homework, where are we turning that in? Because, um, okay, I, I, I'm, I went to A41, but it doesn't have like a submit option. So it should now. So earlier- Oh, never mind, it's right there now. Okay, it wasn't earlier. Yeah, I, I had to send Max a message and he helped me fix it, but it should be good now. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Just to be clear, we're turning in the screenshot of those four exercises. Is that correct? Yep, exactly. Really what I want to do, is I want to be able to take a look at uh, the, what you did. So I want to be able to see the request you made and the response you got back. The screenshot is probably the easiest way, but if there's another way you want to provide that, that's fine too. Danielle, there's a part two to three. So there's actually five screenshots. Oh, I didn't do that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> This is probably a very noobish question. When does this normally end? What time? 8.30. Okay. Cool. 8.30, but normally if, if there's not much left for, the yeah. end, for this class, he would like let us go or help us out with whatever else we have. Really, Wayne? <laughs> oh, seriously. <laughs> what did I do? I, no, I think we should stay and soak up as much information as we can. Oh, oh, I was just giving information. My bad. <laughs> so, so fast. How are you guys doing tonight? In general, uh what have been your favorite parts of careers in code so far? What's been what's been the fun fun things? HTML and CSS and uh, Bootstrap. Okay. Not not JavaScript. Yeah, I hated JavaScript. JavaScript. <laughs> well, what if I told you that 
going forward, the rest of the class is going to use JavaScript. I, I know that. I know that. That's why I said that. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's really important. Um, and you'll you'll it, it's it's one of those things where it's just going to take take some time, but you'll figure it out. Um, okay. Uh, a question for later on in the week so I can start to think about how I'm going to tailor some explanations. Max told me he talked with you guys about promises. Does the name promise ring a bell? Does that ring a bell at all? A little bit. Yeah. Is that, promise. Is that async? Yeah. Promise, await, and all that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really frustrated he taught you guys async await because that's going to make it. So he, so he little... hasn't taught us it. He, yeah. um, he just he told us Mention. we would learn about it later, but there was a particular example that needed the async and await, but he did not teach us it, no. Okay. Okay. So Max told me that he taught you guys about promises, and then I wouldn't have to get into it at all my week, but it sounds like I'm going to have to, which is fine. I just want to know so I can properly tailor my, uh, my topics for that. Okay, because uh, fun fact, it, they're gonna be really important for some of this networking stuff we're gonna do in a browser, um, which is good. Um, but it's something that's in the past students have really struggled with. Which is so, so that's something if you have any, any good links to share, I wouldn't mind. Uh watching a video on yeah so not to toot my own horn or anything but last cohort i did an office hours on promises that i thought was really good like i watched it a couple weeks ago to, to, to like review it and i was like wow i did a really good job explaining them um so i'll maybe post that link somewhere so i'll post the link to the first couple uh, uh videos from last cohort and then also that office hours um, there's a bunch of stuff online too about promises. The, th the thing is, so the way I tend to approach teaching things, which for better or worse, is I like to teach things sort of closer from first principles. So I don't like to just jump into things and say, okay, here's a thing. Um, here's what you do, here's sort of how you write with it, here's how you sort of use it. I like to jump into something like, okay, here's a thing, here's why that thing exists. Let's talk about sort of a bit of its history, sort of give you the context you need about why it exists, so you sort of know the things you need to ask good questions about it. So when you run into a problem, you're not sort of like struggling to explain what's happening. Most likely it's related to something I talked about because we went into why the thing exists and sort of a lot of the background on it. Um, that, uh, that's, that tends to be my approach. So for promises, when I taught them at that office hours, I sort of started at the beginning as to like why they're important, why you need them. And went like, it was like a good two hours where we just went from like sort of naive asynchronous JavaScript code all the way through to like promises and a little bit beyond that too. Um, so I, I don't know, um, that, that approach may work well for some people, may not work as well for other people. If you just want like a, here are promises, like tutorial sort of thing, I can probably dig up one of those too. Um, but yeah, so let, me know, let me know what you're looking for. I mean, the office hour sounds like a good introduction. Cool. Okay. Uh, I think I have that link pretty handy here because I was sending it to Max pretty recently. And then, and then if I just, if I want more generic explanations of promise, I can always just use Google. Yeah. Um, depending on how well the explanation from the office hours goes, um, I found MDN to be pretty good at explaining it. Um, okay. It, it, it approaches it more from like a, a, let me put it this way. It's something that you, I, I, would, I would use to clarify questions, not something I would use to try to learn promises from the beginning. So if it's something where you have some questions about how they work, that might be a good 
resource. If you're really confused, it would not be a good resource. Um, if you're, th th that's the thing that's a bit hard. Like with a lot of this like, promise stuff you'll find out there, I find very little of it actually goes through the whole like story as to why promises are around, why they're important. Um, that's why I ended up doing that office hours. I couldn't really find anything that I thought was like good enough. Um, and Chris, yeah, sent out a pretty good link this week that where the guy was talking about the history of callbacks and yeah, and then he he showed a few different examples, and then he said, and then he showed a pro, he showed a promise and and how it had like um, I forget what you call it when if it's success or fail error, error or response or something but it was just enough to get me a little confused yeah did doug say christy sent yeah that was one of, wasn't that you sent out like five uh videos a couple days ago okay i have to go back and look i don't or, or maybe i was just watching one of them and then you know you let it play maybe we just went to the guy's next video Well, I posted that office hours video. I had that, just had that accessible. So um, might be a good resource. If it works well for you, cool. Um, the thing I would be wary about though, is like, I am pretty strongly of the opinion, if you're going to like actually figure out how promises work, it's important to learn what's going on and not just to type sort of the, the like dot thens or like the asyncs and awaits just blindly. Like it's important to know what's actually going on there. And there, I find often promises are taught in a way where it's more about just typing the right words and less about understanding what's actually going on. <clears throat> and it's really important to understand what's actually going on once you get above anything but a service level, because what ends up happening in a lot of these complicated web applications is you're not just making one request, you're making multiple requests. And you have to do things like you have to kick off one request and then it comes back and you've got to do things like kick off like five requests using information from that first request. And you sort of get into these complicated situations where understanding the order in which all these things happen becomes really critical to reason about. And if you don't have the background knowledge, you just sort of get lost. Um, so that's my take, at least. I think I think it's fair to say that all of us are still uh, grasping JavaScript. So yeah, and I'll say for what it's worth, really the only yeah, you're working with them. The only you like. Only like the only new sort of thing we're going to be talking about in JavaScript outside of like the networking stuff is going to be promises. Like there's no sort of like new language features. Like it, otherwise, it's I mean it's going to be sort of all the sort of same stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But that's where like that's really where this is going to get a lot harder because this request stuff in a vacuum is pretty easy. But sort of take that mix it in with JavaScript, and then also add some like weird asynchronous behavior that's a little bit hard for many, it'll end up being hard for many of you to reason about. And you'll sort of, it, it'll end up being pretty tricky. So I'm, because this is a week, we got to get into it pretty soon, but I wanted to give this first day to not have to worry about it. But tomorrow um, it's going to come in in full force. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, tomorrow we're going to be talking about two things just to give a high level preview since we're almost out of time here. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is a tool called curl. And that's an, another way you can make requests. Um, and the other thing we're going to talk about is a tool called fetch, which is a way you can make requests in a web browser. So, yeah. Um, the day after that, we're going to be talking about, I think, let me check. I should know this off the top of my head. Um, 
I think we're going to be talking about a bunch of headers that you can include. Yeah, a, a bunch of sort of standard headers like that you get in the request and response. We're going to go through a bunch of them. And then also this thing called JSON, which I think you've been exposed to a little bit, but we're going to go get into it a lot more because it ends up being pretty important. And then uh, the final day, day four, we're going to talk about uh, sort of a bunch of background on uh, APIs and sort of how you uh, sort of deal with them, a lot of the conventions around it, and get you kicked off in that New York Times project. So it's uh, it's going to be a lot, um, but hopefully, hopefully it'll go well. Anyway, though, um, I think we're about done for today. So if anyone's uh, got any more questions, feel free to shoot them my way. Um, or if not, I think, uh, think we'll finish up for the day. Um, and if you have anything afterwards, uh, I'm open in Slack. I'll be around. So. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you.